she would you know have that rec those records and we can look at it and she's cleared and there's no other risk factors that are presenting in the pregnancy then that's it is there something that you're looking for in terms of what their cesarean was like that would give you a red flag like no we can't do it because this yes so we that. have uh, typically two types of incisions that would be done so you have the classical which is uh, from straight up and then you have the transverse so what everyone gets now, the bikini. Right. Um, and so ideally, we were looking for the transverse cut. Classical, we would not uh, typically be attempting a, a VBAC out of the hospital if they had a classical incision. And um, so the transverse is what we're looking for. And then a lot of times, like in the op report, and it's not, like it doesn't have to be, but usually what the type of closure they do, it's either two layers or one, and, and we it would be great if it was two layers. If not, um, the doctor will just, you know, review it and let us know. and be able to monitor as well. I will tell you this, a lot of moms I've spoken to in regards to wanting a VBAC, they're like, oh, well, my incision on the outside is like right by the bikini. But what we're looking for is what they did in the inside because the majority of the time there are gonna be, um, you know, horizontal on the outside, but we wanna see how they went in internally. So that's really important to understand too. So uh, even though they go in horizontally on the outside, there could be a different form of incision on the inside? It's very rare, but yes. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. And the two things in the state of Florida that we would need if you want to do outside of hospital delivery with being a VBAC is you need that op report that Sandy was saying, and then you also need to um, consult. Well, we have to send you for a consult with the, to a physician, right? Okay. So then the physician's going to look at the report, and then he's going to, or he or she, is going to go over the pros and cons of doing a VBAC so that the state knows, okay, well, you have been educated on the risk factors, and you have chosen still to go ahead and move forward and then they trust that the provider does so, so I actually went through this process myself with my second baby, and uh, so the way I figured this out is I called the hospital where I had my first baby, mm -hmm. and I said, I need my records from the day I had my C-section with her, how do I go about that? And so then they gave me like the phone number to the um, right. medical record department, mm -hmm. and then I had to fill out a form and stop in physically to pick up the yeah. documents and pay for the, uh, copies and then once I had that report I brought it to my midwife and then she um, gave it to me to take to the OBGYN who then reviewed it and made sure that um, everything that was done during that first c-section allowed for uh, right uh, 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 made me a candidate for a VBAC right, right. And, and a lot of times they'll also do like I know our backup also does an ultrasound just to make sure that where the scar is, there's no uh, like thinning going on or anything that oh, would that's really cool. cause alarm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some providers will do that, and we love that about him because that's important. And I never even thought about that until he brought it to light. So that's very interesting. And okay. he will be at the workshop, by the way. Oh, 
Very yes. cool. He's part of the panelists. <laughs> He's the panelist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so I know that you ladies do VBOX, and I know that some OBs will do VBOX, but I also I know that there's some rules about where you can birth VBOX. Right. So right. Yes. you want to tell us a little bit about well, that? Well, um, first of all, I also want to mention that we're in the state of Florida, so we're talking about right. Florida. Exactly. Yeah. Specifically yeah. Right. Florida. Well, go ahead, Sandy. So in the state of Florida, the law states that you are not allowed to do a VBAC in a birthing center, but you are allowed, it is your right to have a home birth. Um, and then, of course, the hospital, if there's an OB that is doing it for you. Um, unfortunately... Oh, no, Right, right. So the home birth, more than likely you're going to have a home birth midwife that's doing a VBAC. Um, and then in the, in the hospital, you may have a certified nurse midwife or an OB. And, and this varies because on my journey when I was looking, um, I didn't realize that some certified nurse midwives do take VBACs and others don't. Yes. I, I met one who didn't and I automatically assumed that none of them do. Um, but some will, some so will. you have to ask. Mm -hmm. And well, that goes for midwives as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, when I did my VBAC, obviously there was no question it was going to be at home. But uh, when I started helping others with their VBAC stories and their in their journeys, um, somebody said to me, "Oh, well, I contacted that midwife, and they don't they don't do VBACs." Mm -hmm. Okay. And I actually did not know that. I didn't know that either. So I was like, "Oh, okay." okay. Well, <laughs> I even I I didn't really do VBACs until just the other day either. Wasn't because I didn't want to do VBACs. I just, at the time, um, a lot of different reasons. Some midwives they carry a certain insurance for a VBAC, and some don't. That's, yep. That's so true. at the time I didn't. It, it's an additional uh, malpractice. Malpractice. Yes. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. <laughs> sure. I mean, I'm sure also it comes into play just like OBs. Like if you're just not comfortable, you're not as secure. Right. And you know that's. A bigger risk. And that so comfortability that might come from depending on how many you've actually attended. Right. And also, I think well, the ones I came across, um, the ones being in the hospital, nurse midwives, uh, the physician that they worked with was not okay with this. Right. Right. Turn, so they, so they that they, becomes they, tricky because yeah. there's a lot of certified nurse midwives who do want to uh, be involved in the VBAC process, but then there's miscommunication or there's lack of... Uh, Support. Right, right, right. They have different mentalities, and then I've also seen practices where one OB will, and then, and then, and then, and then won't. right, yeah, right, yeah. Well, yeah, we've encountered that a lot. Um, and then, as far as certified nurse midwives, when they're in the hospital, even though you know that's your midwife, she's been seeing you, they are still working under the doctor. So if the doctor says no, they they have to follow those rules. That's yeah. right. Okay. Nice. Okay. What else do we have? Um, what do you think? The role, of, like, what role does support, like, the support system play in a VBAC? Having the, the birthing mothers oh. having a support system in oh. place. So I am, crucial. I am like uh, almost like you must have a doula. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> all VBAC should have a doula. I, 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 I have so of my own experience. I didn't realize how much luggage you carry when you're VBACing. Oh yeah. Until I didn't have a doula during mine, and I realized uh, I should have. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you live and you learn. And but but I think the additional support because there's all of this like history of thinking for whatever reason you had your C-section that all just it comes back like tenfold when you're oh, yeah. laboring, and you don't you don't expect it, and you still think, oh, I prepared, I thought yeah. about it, and mm -hmm. I know I'm fine. And yeah, no, not so much. Yes, yeah. yeah. so, I mean sometimes, and and we've been talking about this a lot lately with Martha is that. Uh, is that birth is not just physical, it's oh, got this it's so entire emotional, emotional component Well, it's a huge it. transition, mental. right? Yeah. Like you're, you're, you're transitioning life into this world so that you can't, it just can't be just physical. It, it can't, it can't be. yeah. There's got to be a lot of other dynamics. And that's why, you know, I got into midwifery and, and, and got into the whole idea of doing natural birth is because it's about honoring that special transition and, and really acknowledging it. And let yeah. it kind of play out and happen because if you try to just oh no big deal, I think you're taking away half of like the, the empowerment of it. It's true, it's true, and I do think that a lot of women uh, who want to work with a doula for their for their birth or for their VBAC, whichever kind of birth they may be having, um, it varies because you may think that you're hiring someone for physical support, and then next thing you know, you're so glad that you decided to work with a doula because you, you ended up needing that extra emotional support. Yeah, I was a hot mess. And I will tell you that, you know, <laughs> especially especially for the family members, because oh, the, yeah. the mom has a lot of luggage and a lot of things that she's going through, but the, the family even more, because the families a lot of times are not prepared and they don't really understand some of the risk factors versus some of the things that are safe. And so they're free.
freaked out that she's even yeah. trying to exactly. have a VBI. Yes, exactly. So having a doula to reassure the partner, the mom, or whoever is freaking out so they don't freak out the mom Absolutely. is so important. So yeah. that brings in also education. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Right. Joe was a hot mess. He didn't know what. <laughs> <laughs> He's been through a few times before that. He had, but they were all hospital. Right. Oh, okay. This was so his first home. home and being a V-back gotcha. as well. So it was a lot gotcha. of, and lot he of just kept cooking. He had, I'm going to cook. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes, he cooked a lot. <laughs> they were. That's cute. Nice. Um, okay, so having discussed all, all these preliminary topics, the reason why we're all here today is mm -hmm. because this Saturday yes. um, there will be a VBAC workshop at the Northwest Regional Library in yes. Coral Springs on Yay. Sample Road and University Drive. And what is this VBAC workshop going to be? Who is it for and what, what should we expect from it? I am extremely excited about this workshop. <laughs> <laughs> it is a training. It's not really a workshop. It's for, okay. It was designed for providers to, um, the first portion of it is going to be VBAC facts. So we have Jen. Jen Camel, who is the um, creator of VBACFacts.com. Oh, yes. oh, very cool. Okay. So she's flying in from California. Awesome. And she's going to do her portion, which she narrowed it down to two hours. Her usual uh, presentation is like six hours. Okay. So now we have two hours. And But I'm still very excited. So just to make sure that like everybody who comes really knows the up-to-date facts on What's ACOG recommendations? Okay. Um, what do you need? Like just everything on it. What are the actual statistics of all the things that we're afraid of? Most of them being uterine rupture, but really, it, it kind of it explains how that, although it's very dangerous. Yes, of course, it's not as high as a factor that other things that can happen in labor. And right. Okay. That's why you need monitoring. And it's not no as high what. as a lot of people make it seem. Right. Okay. Exactly. Right. So it's factual, evidence based. Right. Yes. Very, right. Very yes. Cool. Okay. She does a lot of research. I mean, this has like become her life. So she's just Amazing. great. So, so everyone who comes to the VBAC workshop will leave knowing all the latest statistics on what the risk factors are, yes. like the pros and cons Yes, are. she's super informative. And then we take a little break. Um, we have some sponsors that are going to be there so everybody can like hang out. I'm going to provide lunch. It's going to be really good. Yeah, I got, I got crazy. <laughs> and um, then, hey, we got people. Okay. So, uh, and then the second half is a part that's really... Uh, there's a, a midwife in Miami, Karina Fitch, and she did this like many years ago about home to hospital transfers and how we can make it better for families and for providers so that when we get there, sometimes we, when we get there, we're greeted with um, a lot of negativity. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nice yeah. way to say it. Yeah. So what the workshop was designed to do was to try to help everybody understand everyone's roles so that we could work more collaboratively which is how it Excellent. should be. Yes. And in other Absolutely. places, it is like that. So That um, is very much needed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So I have been dying to get her to come and do the workshop, and so I, I decided to mush it into this workshop, and it worked out great. And then we have a panelist, so we have Dr. Uh, Berto Lopez. He's an OB who's going to be coming to speak there. We have a NICU nurse. We have a, an RN. We have um, my, my brother and my sister-in-law. They're going to be the consumer panelists, and so they're going to share their story. So... A lot of things going on, how, what you didn't like about it, what you did like about it, how can we make it better, and that's going off of the parent, and then also the provider. Well, this is what came into me, and this is why I didn't like it, and okay. maybe if we, you know, acknowledge each other, or called first, or whatever that's it is, really we can make this yeah. better. And, and so, this is why I'm so excited for this event. I'm Have you sent this to, like, all the OBs in the world? Like, so I've sent it to the hospitals every week since two months ago. Literally. Yeah. Awesome. And okay. so, so I don't know hospitals. how many are coming. Well, but there is actually see, there's continuing education uh, credit credits for it. So some for oh, nurses awesome. and some for midwives. Midwives okay. will receive most of the um, CEUs, but nurses can also get a few CEUs from Jen's portion of Very it. Very cool. So there's a lot of benefits to coming to the event. Yeah, yeah. so we should mention that if anyone who is watching this yes. tonight is a uh, nurse or works in the medical field and you know somebody, you've got yes. an OB who's in the family or a midwife or a nurse, Yes. let everyone know about this because this event is open to everyone in South Florida who's yes. working in the birth world. Yes, and if you uh, are working at a hospital, we give you a special group rate, so that's another Oh, one. and also, our parents welcome to come. Yes, we so, have, uh, we, everybody so got some free couples. tickets and yeah. so we told them to share it with uh, be back moms awesome. so that they can also be informed and get all the up-to-date information so that when awesome. they attempt their be back and you know if they have to transfer locations or whatever it is 
they know what Perfect. to okay. be So we'll definitely aware. put all the information about the workshop in the comments below. We're gonna put the address yes. and um, what time it's gonna start, who's gonna be there, the link to all the information. Um, but if you are a provider who would like to partake and you have questions, feel free to reach out to us and we'll yes. connect you with these wonderful We ladies. actually want a lot of providers. The whole yes, goal please. is to get providers yes. to go to get their continuing education yeah, absolutely. about this. <laughs> Yeah, and, um, and also if you are um, a mom who has had a previous C-section and you're interested in finding out more information about possibly having a VBAC this time around, yes. feel free to reach out to us as well and we'll get you information about attending yes. the workshop. That so. would be great. And we're looking forward to seeing everyone.